Woo! That was a heck of a flight. I'm Matthew Burchette, and this is Behind the Wings. Matthew. Okay. What are you doing with my helmet? Give it back to me. Oh. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh. You're playing around like I do. Good. Hey, John. Hey, Matthew. How are you? Buddy? Thanks for being Good to on see our you. show. This is General John Barry. He's actually the CEO now of Wings Over the Rockies, and he's also a former F4 driver. So we're going to use him as our resident expert for this episode. John, give me a little bit of information on this plane. Well, you know, the F4 was operational in 1961 for the first time with the Navy. But the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marine Corps all flew it. And actually, the F4 was flown by 11 different countries around the wow. world. You know. So this is a great airplane. I mean, it's a Vietnam era kind of uh, uh, jet. The fascinating thing about it, you know, besides being Mach 2 airplane, but it could carry almost anything. We had a 20 millimeter, you know, gun in the front right. that carried about 600 rounds. That's about six seconds of rounds. Ooh, you gotta, gotta be pretty accurate. Uh, you gotta be quick about it too. <laughs> then we had AIM-7 Sparrows, which are radar guided missiles. We had four. And then four AIM-9 heat seeking. Those are the uh, sidewinders. Sidewinders, right. anyway, exactly. But then you can carry a whole bunch of different kinds of assortment of bombs. 500 pound bombs, 1,000 pound bombs, 2,000 pound bombs, laser guided bombs, and also nuclear weapons. Man, this thing was really kind of a dump truck, a do it all kind of a plane, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it could, it was a master of that. I mean, when it first came out, it uh, was an air to air aircraft. It was an air to ground airplane. The reality is that we were sitting Zulu alert, which means that you were sitting air defense alert. And if the horn went off and you're in a dead sleep, you'd be airborne in less than five minutes, supersonic in probably less than seven minutes from a Whoa. dead sleep. That's nuts. Now, I remember you and I talking one time about when you guys were carrying B-61 nukes, which we actually have one here, and you had to wear an eye patch? Yeah, it's kind of strange to think that you're flying a combat airplane and you're flying, carrying an eye patch. But the risk was if a nuclear detonation went off somewhere in front of you, you'd be blinded. So you, first thing you do is you put the eye patch when you got into the target area, and, and hopefully if nothing went wrong, you'd be all right. But if it didn't, you'd pick up the eye patch and you have one good eye. That's how crazy it was. That's crazy. John, thank you so much for all your knowledge today, and thank you for the leadership of the museum. We really ha enjoy having you here. Well, this is uh, my favorite airplane we've got in here, obviously, with 2,000 hours of flying it, and uh, it's been a great opportunity. So we'll thank make you. sure we keep it nice and clean for you. You better. By the way, it's a little spot over here. Yes, sir. We'll take care of that. Okay. All right. Okay. So earlier, we had a boarding ladder attached to the aircraft, which is great if you're at an airfield that has, you know, infrastructure. But what if you land someplace at a kind of a forward operating base that really doesn't have anything like that? Check this out. Bam! Your own boarding ladder stowed right in the aircraft. How cool is that? All you gotta do is just climb on up. But enough of that. Let's go check out some of the weaponry. So one of the things that General Barry talked about was the ordnance that the F-4 could carry. I'm actually at the tail of a 2,000 pound general purpose bomb. Now the cool thing about the 2,000 pounder was that you could actually add a different tail and a different nose and all of a sudden this dumb bomb becomes smart. And the F-4 could carry these guys and then through GPS and laser tracking could actually semi-aim where the bomb would land. How cool is that? Now that is a smart bomb. But have we got a surprise for you? We have even got something that's even cooler than this and you're not gonna wanna miss it. We're gonna have to go into some of the bowels of the museum to see it, so follow me. So everybody that knows jet aircraft know that they are equipped with ejection seats. It's really the only way you're gonna get out of a fast mover. Now, the F-4 is no different. It actually had two Martin Baker seats, but check this Martin Baker seat out. Blammo, how cool is this? Look at this thing, it is beat up. You wanna know why? 
because it was actually used in a real-life ejection in Vietnam. The pilot, Ed Payne, is actually from Colorado, and he loaned us this seat, and it's not on display yet. So you guys are the first ones to get a gander at this thing. Now, I know there's some history geeks out there, and if you really want to do some Googling, check out 66-8774. That's the serial number of the airplane that Ed was flying when he punched out. Now, you want to know another secret? It was his second punch out of an F-4 in Vietnam. That's nuts! This guy is amazing, and we are so thankful to him to loan us this seat. And I'm really glad you guys are getting to take a look at it because it, it is really cool. So the general didn't want me wearing his flight helmet, but he can't keep me from wearing this one. In your face, general. Don't fire me. Okay, so that was our episode on the F-4 Phantom. Thank you all for tuning in so much. We really enjoyed bringing it to you. If you've got questions or comments, make sure you post them up. And if you've got any buddies that you think might like this episode or in the entire series for that matter, make sure to share. We've got to get that word out there. So next month, we are doing an episode on the Titan missile program. Now that's going to be cool. And we're going to take a field trip to someplace really cool. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss that part. All right, we'll see you next month. Ciao.